Hosea chapter 7. And this is continues from, from God speaking from chapter 6 verse 4. When I would have healed Israel. Now 6.1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he has torn. And he will heal us. That's Israel speaking. And God says okay. When I would have healed you. Then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. God made their sins to be known for repentance. And the wickedness of Samaria, that's the capital of Israel, northern tribe. For they committed falsehood, liars. And the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoiled without. 2 Kings 13. We read that in chapter 6, verse 9. All around Israel is just wickedness and crime as America is today. Oh, we want to get right. We want to come to God, but we are missing repentance. And you can't just say a prayer and be saved. The Bible says for, for a Christian in the church age, you become a new creature. Now, you may still sin, but your attitude towards it is, is, is you hate it. You despise it. You repent of it. You try to stop it. And anybody who proclaims to be a Christian and flaunts around and enjoys a sin, you call them to question. I don't go to church. I don't go to any church. And I don't see no wrong with drinking. I don't see nothing wrong with smoking. I, I, I. Yeah, you know what? Did you just say a prayer? Because a true person of God, whether Old Testament or New Testament, your heart will be striving to obey God. And here, oh, we'll, we'll come to God. And God's like, okay, here's your sins. And they don't do anything about them. And then we talked about the priests, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now we're looking at the people. They consider not in their hearts. That's where it all comes from. It's your heart. It's your motives, not your head. Not what you think. It's not your imagination. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. That I remember all their wickedness. See God hasn't put it away. He can't. You don't do a hocus pocus and then your sins disappear. These people in Israel if they were to get right. They were sacrifices. There was the law to tell them to get down in Jerusalem, get to the temple, and do what the law told them to do. And they don't do it. The temple's there. The priests are working in Jerusalem. Problem is, they're going to the, the false priests. They're going to the calves to worship. They're not getting their sins clean. And you can eat Jesus all you want. But God says, you know what? I remember their wickedness. You can go in that closet with that guy all you want and confess all your sins. I remember their wickedness. You can sell all the magazines you want. I remember all their wickedness. I come to Jesus Christ at Calvary and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need to be washing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm tired of this battle. I'm sick of this battle, but I keep doing it. In my flesh dwells no good. And the Lord says, what sins are you talking about? 1 John 1, 9. The only way that God can be faithful and true to, to, to pass our sins away and wash them away and erase them is under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are too many people today who are living, calling themselves Christians, calling themselves saved, and the Bible says, I remember all their wickedness. And that's a harsh statement. Do you realize somebody could be living today thinking that when they die, all is well, there is no hell, and then wake up in hell? Talk about tragedy. Now, 
Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. Behold, the, behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. That's not taught. That's not believed in America today. There are people going running around that have sexual sins and saying God loves us too. No, he don't. You are fooled. And you will die in your sins. And God is watching you and he despises you. This is exactly what Israel's is doing. This is exactly what America is doing. And just because you put on a, a religious overtone, God is not going to, oh, okay, I, I, I'll overlook that. You gave money to a, to a priest. Uh, it's, it's not crossed off. Do you think those 30 pieces of silver are wiped away from Judas's account? I don't know. I've always thought about you imagine what you take Judas selling Jesus out for 30 pieces. You imagine the great white throne judgment, God taking those 30 pieces, and just dropping them on the floor. As he did. You're going to Imagine God calling up your priest standing before you and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one you trusted in? I'm going to throw him in the lake of fire in, in, in a couple moments. That's the one you trusted in? Besides me? That's who you put your trust in. That's who you put your faith in. Well, Lord, I never knew. What about this gospel track, uh, Mary's Commandment? I know you read it. What about that, that, that man and those men I sent to your door with, with a Bible, with the gospel? Oh, but you let the ones with the magazines and the film strip come in your house. But what, what about the ones that had a Bible and tried to give you the piece of paper? What about trying to buy apples and oranges and you heard a big loudmouth guy preaching the gospel? But well, when you went into the bathroom in Walmart and someone left the gospel track in the stall for you to read. But you you believed him over me? He's going to die in his sins. I have gained victory over sins and death. God is serious. He sealed 66 books on our instructions. And there are people out there, we wrote more. The Apocrypha. The Book of Mormon. The, the, the Book of Jesus Christ coming to America. The Prayer of Jabez. The Koran. Or Koran, to call it, call it, whatever you want to call that garbage. They made the king glad with their wickedness. Oh, we talk about the priests. Look at this. The leader of the nation is happy at his population because of their wickedness. Sounds like our government, doesn't it? And I ain't just talking about President Obama. I'm talking about all the presidents. What one president of all the presidents ever stood up for the Bible and stood up for the Lord Jesus Christ? And I don't mean in a closet that you've got to find something on page 367 of a thousand page diary. What one president stood in the Oval Office representative of this country and said, I am going to stand for the Bible and I'm going to stand for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that, guy, that, that man was a, was a Christian. Yeah. They made the king glad with their wickedness. The government's corrupt, the people are corrupt, and the religion's corrupt. You know where Israel's going? They're going bye-bye. They're going to Assyria. They're going to be ejected out of the land. You know where America's going to go, the Lord tarries? She's going to be ejected out of her. She is ejected out of the land. I went in the hospital the other night and had a Muslim as a doctor. 
with the name, what was his name? Muhammad. Dr. Muhammad. As a Bible believing, born again Christian, if I were a liar on the operating table under him, what would happen if he would known I was of Jesus Christ and not of Allah? Huh? Made me kind of nervous. And the princes. Now, that would be your Senate, your House, your representative, your mayors, and all. That's under the rulership. That's the next step to the rulership of the country with their lives. Oh, oh, what is this one? If you vote for me, I'll give you blah, 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 blah. blah. Shut up. You're lying. You're bad as a used car salesman. Get out there and vote. For these liars, you find one you stand up for. For the liars, don't vote for them. Don't show up election day and tell them, you know what, we're sick of your crap. If no one shows up to the election vote on election day, then you know what, you can't put any of those liars in office. We only have one year that we don't vote. And have four years of no idiots in Washington, D.C. And let us run by our own ways. As this nation was founded. With an axe and a rifle and you took care of your family. How's that? We had a revolutionary war here. The fight against Europe. We're not going to have uh, no king from England. And you know what? We're just as worse as we were under the king of, of England. We're just as worse. Tea Party Part 2. Problem is, Americans don't drink tea, they drink coffee. So shut up. They are all adulterers. Hollywood. Your books. Your nightclubs. That website there where you go meet women. Yeah, and you know how they found out when that site was broken into? How many of those men were married? As an oven heated by the baker, who ceased from rising after he has kneaded the dough until it be leavened. This kind of brings us to the night of Passover. Guy puts dough out there, leavens the bread up. That didn't happen in Passover. They didn't have time to leaven up. But you know, he makes the dough, it's to rise. It says, Who ceased from. Raisin after he had kneaded the dough. <coughs> Excuse me. He didn't get out of bed. He didn't finish the job. Unfinished work. He just lets it just rise and rise and rise. You're supposed to, you're supposed to once it's, it's risen, you're supposed to make it into dough. You're supposed to make it into bread. You're supposed to make whatever you're supposed to be making it. You're supposed to be making it. He didn't finish the job. In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. Oh, let's get the king drunk. Did you read what it says in Proverbs about a ruler drinking? It was 29, 30, or 31. I think it's 30. He said, these are the words of my mother. You're not to give a ruler or a king drink. It perverts his mind. He can't think straight. I wonder what, how much the White House pays for booze to be delivered to the president if he drinks. I don't know if he drinks. I don't care if he drinks. But how much? Of all the people that you put in office, if you were to call their checking account and how much they spent on booze, what would the number be? If all the people in Washington, D.C., your mayors and all that, if they say, okay, we're going to quit drinking for 30 days, one month, we're going to quit drinking, will you put the breweries out of business? That's not going to happen. Because as much as alcohol kills people, as much as alcohol destroys families, they still allow it because it's good tax money. Make him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hands with scorners. 
So he's drinking and being with fellowship with people who scorn. Well, that guy over here, he don't drink. Oh, he's a pussy. He, 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 he get drunk in a bottle of milk. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Hey, look at those goody shoes over there. Ho, 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 ho. Look at Jose preaching against the nation. Oh, yeah, it ain't going to happen. Hey, well, give me another, give me another jigger. The nation's corrupt. The people are corrupt. Their religion's corrupt. For they have made ready their heart like an oven. Also, the baker is, is an illustration. While they lie in wait, their baker sleepeth all the night. In the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. The utensils is ready. They have been pre prepared. But there's no work done. The heart has not turned to God. The leaven has not been stopped. Once you bake bread, it don't rise no more. Whatever how the, the heating, it, it stops the leavening process. No, it's just a piece of dough is getting baked. The sins are getting leavened. Leaven is, is nothing good in the Bible. It's the Doctor and the Pharisees, Jesus says, it's a type of sin that just grows, 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 grows. They're not putting it in the oven to stop it. They're allowing it to get worse and worse. A little leaven leavens the whole book. There's no stopping. It's getting broader and broader and broader. They are all hot as an oven. And have devoured their judges. People who stood up and said, this is what you're supposed to do. Shut up. You're fired. Go to jail. Kill the prophets. Stone the prophets. Naboth didn't do nothing wrong. He ended up dead. Get Elijah out of here. I'm going to kill that guy for... For, for doing good. While they lie in wait, their baker sleepeth all the night, and in the morning is burning as a flaming fire. They are all hot as an oven, and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me, that's God. No king in Israel ever got right. No king in Israel ever repented of his sins. It just got worse. It just got worse. It just got worse. It just got worse. The Father God said, that's it. You're done. You know how you got to heal America? You got to take that dough that's leaven. You got to put it in the oven. You got to stop it. But how can you do that when you got churches who celebrate the worldly things and the religious things? Pretty soon you're going to have churches advertising, you know, send the children out, go get Easter eggs. The women will have their Easter dresses and their little bonnet hats. And then we'll follow up with the next pagan holiday. And then we'll go with the next pagan holiday. And then we'll have a Christmas tree, but it's not really a Christmas tree. It's just a decoration, you know. So there's no turning to God. There's no repentance. And they're getting hot as the oven. I mean, it's just burning and burning and burning. Ephraim has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim's involved. He shouldn't be involved. It has stretched out to another tribe, Israel. It has enjoined Ephraim. It is a cake not turned. Lukewarm. He has not separated himself. He is, as the term would be, he's half-baked. You ever have a bakery item and 
it looks good on the outside, but you go take a bite and find out, you know, the center is not cooked. It kind of ruins the whole thing, doesn't it? It's gooey. Doesn't taste right. It's not the way it should be. <coughs> if you try to get right, but you didn't get fully right. You gotta get whole right with God. You gotta step out. Strangers have devoured his strength. Sin will take your strength away. And he knoweth it not. No idea. He don't see what's, what's going on. He thinks he's doing good. He thinks all is well. And he's been fooled. Yea, gray hair. Proverbs 16.31 Are here. And they're upon him. And he knew it not. Worry. This is not gray hairs of age. This is gray hairs of anxiety. He's getting old. Death is coming. More sure. For all will die. But I mean when you got gray hairs. You're getting closer and closer. And he has no idea what's going on. And when you do any kind of public ministry. You know the tone of people here. You, you look at them as, as, you, as you bring them. And, and show them what the gospel is. And what God expects to them for them. And they go about their merry way. They have no idea. And they don't realize. They may not have gray hairs. But as far as their death. Could be tomorrow. So you're liking to old. You know, they keep saying over the hill. How do you know you're over the hill when you don't know when you're going to die? I'm 47, 48 years old. 48 because it's an even number. If I were to die at 48, over the hill would have been 24 years old. All right? If by chance God has me live to 80, I just got over the hill. If I die tomorrow, I'm in the hole. <laughs> I'm way past over the hill. I'm gray hair and, and, and about to go. See, there's no knowing what is in your life. You can't put off. And the pride of Israel, pride of America, testified to his face. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him. With all this. The pride. What's the pride to their faith? We're not going to turn to God. We're going to rely on ourselves. That's pride. We're going to remain in our sins. Pride. Who would want to humble themselves? To repent. Pride. Ephraim is. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. They run to men instead of God for help. Now, a dove that doesn't have a heart is dead. <laughs> okay? A silly dove, it doesn't care. It's stupid. When they shall go. I will spread my net upon them. The dove. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to entrap them like a dove being hunted. That dove is so stupid. He'll probably walk, walk right into the net. Hi guys. What are you going to do with me? When's dinner going to be served? Oh, I'm the dinner? I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. 
I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. They're about to get into the Lord's trap. They're about to fall. They're about to go. They're about to become a cooked goose. Half baked. Woe unto them. For they have fled from me. That's where America's going. She's leaving God. And what happens when you flee God, America? Destruction unto them. Because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them. The people of Israel have been redeemed. They have been bought. And they have turned away from God. Yet. They have spoken lies against me. Sort of like a perverted modern Bible. Sort of about the doctrines they come up with. It's religion. And there are many Christians out there for 713. They're saved. But they turn from God. Destruction unto them. You're not going to be blessed when you become a backslider and leave God. Because you have trans against God. Though you've been redeemed under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and many will speak lies against me, you know, it was, it was hard times, too hard to live, or, you know, anything to excuse yourself because of the pride to say, get down your knees and get right with God. They have not cried unto me. Wait a minute, no, I didn't, that's not the complete sentence. You ever hear somebody, always hear these people, mercy Jesus, oh my sweet Jesus. Oh. They have not cried unto me with their heart. Did you get that? It's not just a prayer. You follow that up with Romans 10.9 and Romans 10.10. 10. When they howl upon their beds. They assemble themselves for corn and wine. And they rebel against me. They're not truly sorry. They're getting no food. They're in agony upon the beds. Yet they don't go to God. They go to Egypt and Assyria. Egypt is a type of the world. Assyria is a type of flesh. They run to the world and they run to the flesh. But they don't run to God. Though I have bound and strengthened, strengthened their arms. Yet do they imagine mischief against me. God has, has, has tried to, to make them get right. What do you think Hosea is for? Hosea is for them to say hey. This is your trouble. Hosea is a doctor. This is your diagnosis, Israel. You are very, very sick. What's the medication, Dr. Hosea? God. Turn to God and repent and seek him. No, I, I've got my own way, thank you very much. They return. Oh, does that sound good? But not to the Most High. Oh, you mean you can have people repent and, and turn and not correctly? Yeah, they can turn to religion. They can turn to programs. They can turn to anywhere but God. And if it's not God, you're not saved. If it's not God, you're not doing it right. And Paul even tells us so much, you better realize it better be the right biblical sound doctrine of Jesus Christ because there's another Jesus out there. There is another gospel out there. That's why Paul said that Jesus died. He was buried according to the scripture. And he arose from the grave the three days according to scripture. You better make sure it's the right Jesus and the right gospel. 
They are like a deceitful bow. That's like a bow and arrow. What would be a deceitful bow? When it turns on yourself? Their princes, here they go again, shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. Their big mouth gets them into trouble. They're so angry, they're speaking. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Isaiah 30, 1 through 4. Hosea 9, 3 through 6. We saw that the priests are corrupt. We're seeing that the government is corrupt. And no one is getting right. And not getting right by what God has prescribed to get right. It's only making it worse. It's only adding more to your sin. It's only making you more and more as dough is more and more and more. Until the whole lump is just leaven. That's it. To the point where God can't use you. God can't do nothing with you. There's nothing that can be done. Then. You just got to put it in the ground. And face judgment. 